Hi and welcome to the channel where I'm building the Fisher Youngster V tail kit. In this video we get the basic rudder completed. The top of the spar is tapered, the bottom of the rudder is closed off and the important gussets are fitted. I do come across a problem which I'll talk to you about slightly towards the end and will need to be rectified in a future video. Remember, this is not an instructional video. This is the way I do things, not necessarily the right way of doing things. So if you get any hints and tips, so much the better. Let's get cracking. Okay, since the last episode, uh, I have fitted the gussets uh, on the main ribs and we're now about to do the tapering of the spar. The method I'm using is I've set up this um, medium density fiberboard MDF, three quarter inch thick, so it doesn't have any flex in it. Uh, so it's contacting the edge of the outer hoop and onto the flat section of the rib it's supported here by another piece to ensure that these are actually flat and i've set the router up to the depth of this mdf so i can just run the router down here and it should taper the spar and just about touch the uh, outer edge of the hoop which has already been tapered slightly by sanding beforehand so that uh, the boards meet up with it correctly okay so we've got the uh, taper cut with the router it needs sanding just to finish it off um, there's a slight mark here that you might just see uh, that's less than a sixteenth of an inch and will be removed when I cut back for the gusset uh, so I'm now just going to go and do the other side I've uh, routed the two areas here on the rudder to take the inset gussets now and uh, the gussets will fit quite nicely like that. Uh, the grain on this uh, gusset is going differently to the other ones on the spar. It's, it, the, the two surface sections are going in this direction. That is to tie the front and rear rib together across the spar and also to allow for the fact that as you can see there's a little bit of flex required because of the change in angle from the spar to this upper section of spar. The uh, upper gusset is pretty conventional. You also might see that I've got packing pieces under here and weights on the uh, front rib. Packing piece clamped and packing piece clamped and a weight on the uh, spar and that's to keep the spar dead level as it should be at 90 degrees the front rib is correct in relationship to the spar and just to stop any chance of flexing uh, with the, the trailing edge bow to maintain everything in its correct position as I uh, put weights on here and get the gusset set when I turn the uh, rudder over I'll do exactly the same thing and that way we'll have it jigged so it is flat Okay, so not to waste time, while well, the glue is drying at the uh, far end on the gussets, I think uh, we'll start looking at this taper section. So the taper section shown on the plan that goes from the rear of the spar here out to the back edge of this bottom rib. And to do that, I'm, uh, it says use quarter by three quarter stock, uh, which we had. So I'm just going to place that on there for the moment and then just mark a line roughly parallel to the spar to start off with and uh, I'll cut that so <coughs> roughly cut to angle cut to length if I put the piece of wood next to this piece of wood, which 
just to help support my rule, I can uh, mark in a taper line. So now I'll just sand that on uh, the belt sander. Okay, so as you've seen uh, from the time lapse, I uh, used the, the uh, belt sander on my sanding station to taper this. It's uh, we'll need to just address that very slightly uh, to make sure that's a perfect fit. It's tapering down to just about nothing. Once it's glued and cured, I can just feather that last little bit into this section here. This is all glued in, so I'll take the clamps off and I'll just give this a sand just to feather it right down, just to get rid of any of the glue which is in the surrounding area. And then I'll set up the router and just route straight back here, so that it's flat. And the, uh, the router should then just taper off to the appropriate points ready for the skin to go on. Then we'll turn it over and do the other side. That's been sanded there so there's no step and that's been routed so that's flat going back to here. Right, I've uh, routed and dealt with both sides, all the gussets are now done. I just want to do this closing panel uh, which will fit something like that. Uh, I want it to come back to here, uh, be feathered down to uh, virtually nothing. Uh, so it's got going to have a taper on here but to cut this to length just a quick tip on how to do it I've drawn my line as you can sort of see there I'll put the steel rule onto that line I'll now put my piece of timber onto there and then with a second steel rule I just lay that on top so because they're the same size I can now draw that line and that line will match exactly where that one is so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that and then I'm going to feather this back uh, the distance from there to there which uh, I can measure which effectively is near enough an inch so I'll just be able to lay that on mark it and feather it back okay so I feathered it back uh, you can tell it's three ply we've got our three different layers of wood with our dark glue stroke packing uh, bond layer between and the lines are reasonably straight they don't have to be perfect but they're reasonably straight going back to my pencil line here so hopefully this piece when I lay it on here it reflects down there is no no real step on that edge at all so this is uh, effectively ready to go and off camera I uh, I did this particular piece as well so I can uh, I've got both sides are now done so what I do is I'll just put this on here and so as it goes back in the same spot I'll put a datum line there and the datum line going across there so I know I'm going back into the, the, the original spot and then uh, from that I'll clamp it and uh, we'll draw on the other side okay so just to give you an idea of what I'll be doing I've uh, clamped the far piece into position and uh, my normal practice would be to draw around the inside there that way I now have the area to which uh, I will be applying the resin for when I bond it and I'll leave this area free uh, for doing it I'll do that on both pieces uh, the other side 
we have drawn I will varnish it uh, so that it's ready so when I bond it into place after varnishing the inside of the uh, the box section uh, it's ready to go so it's everything is sealed so as you can see I've jigged up the rudder so as before weights are on holding the uh, leading edge flat so there's no, no movement and the trailing edge is all uh, supported at its correct height and uh, because I uh, did the marking I knew exactly also where to sand uh, the wood now I always sand plywood uh, I use 60 grit uh, across the grain to create a key and that's to help the resin penetrate the surface uh, plywood doesn't really allow for the resin to penetrate deeply into the surface and sometimes there's like a, a slight film on the surface where they put their type of release agent uh, on their molding when they're actually pressing the plywood so it's good just to give it a key up uh, with that uh, coarse uh, sandpaper just to get it to make sure we've got something to glue with okay I'm going to just bond this on and I'll show you uh, what it looks like uh, afterwards okay all clamped and uh, in position you might wonder why I have it uh, hanging over the end here and everything else jigged flat that's so I can get in and make sure I can remove any of the squeeze out well, to remove the squeeze out which appears inside so that I can uh, get other components to fit in nice and neatly and also we don't really want excess squeeze out showing anywhere it uh, adds weight and no real strength the skins bonded on uh, and I've gone around with the router just to smooth everything off all nice and sorted out there uh, the underside the other side I've, uh, I've left open and this would be the point where normally you would put in uh, your varnish you varnish this up you varnish the skin that's uh, inside the skin for that area as we marked on here just that little bit there we would uh, varnish that and then uh, two coats uh, verithane or polyurethane once that dries we would uh, put our resin on this would then go into position once it had cured uh, according to the plans we'd cut an oval or elongated hole in here to allow us to put bolts through to bolt the rudder horn on uh, I'll go into uh, my plans uh, probably in the next rudder video uh, to get around that I don't like the idea of having a hole cut in here it reduces the strength and to access the bolts uh, if you ever need to take the horn off or to tighten it up you'd have to cut into the covering so we'll deal with that but we have got a problem uh, let me show you what the problem is okay so the problem that I've come across uh, I'm just putting the uh, the fin into position here uh, I was doing that so I could uh, check and uh, the way the shaping was going to be for the uh, leading edge going up the rudder and if you note the, the front edge of the fin uh, doesn't naturally lie with the same front section of the rudder so my initial thoughts were I got it wrong I've got the bow wrong uh, you know, it must have allowed it to flex out so I double checked the bow here against the uh, the plan thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can remember go fly and feel the sky.